Okay, hi guys. I'm going to take you through a theory test today using Theory Test Pro, uh, so you can basically see how this works. Um, I'm going to do the questions. I'm going to give some narration on them. I'm going to explain why I'm picking the answer that I am. Um, hopefully, I'll get all of the questions correct. But it has been some time since I've done a theory test, and there are some new questions in here, um, which I won't have come across before. So there, there'll be some medical ones that. Uh, there might be a gap in my knowledge on that, so this is why I do the theory test myself every so often, uh, just to stay up to date. So I'm going to hit the start practicing button. Oh, let's get that right. It's not behaving. Thank you. Now it is. Okay. I'm going to get it to read this out. What will happen if your car's wheels are unbalanced? The steering will pull to one side. The steering will vibrate. Okay, I'll read it out. What will happen if your car's wheels are unbalanced? Uh, the steering will pull to one side, the brakes will fail, the steering will vibrate, the tyres will deflate. Okay, this is one you're going to have to know. It's not really one you can guess at. Um, if your wheels are unbalanced, it will cause your steering to vibrate. Okay, why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? Okay, rear fog lights are uh, one, possibly two, depending on what car you've got. Uh, really bright red lights on the back of the car, uh, bright enough to penetrate through thick fog. So when the weather's cleared, it means that they are going to be extremely bright. Um, and they can diffuse uh, your brake lights, so they're not going to be very visible to other drivers. Um, so looking at the answers, to allow your headlights to work, no, uh, your, your headlights have to be on for your fog lights to work anyway. So fog lights will not work independently. Your dipped headlights and tail lights have to be on first before fog lights will work. To stop the engine losing power, uh, no, they use very little power, they are just a light bulb at the end of the day. To stop draining the battery, um, no, if your car's in working order, then the battery will not drain whilst your car is uh, on the move while the engine's running. So the engine powers everything once that's begun. Or to prevent dazzling drivers behind, okay, yeah, because the fog lights are very bright, uh, in clear conditions, they will dazzle the driver behind. When you may stop. Sorry, when may you stop on a clear way? Never in the rush hour when it's busy during daylight hours. Okay, uh, a clear way means literally that it must be kept clear. It must all be kept on the move. Uh, we're not allowed to stop unless it's unavoidable, like your car's broken down or you're having some kind of serious medical episode. So, never allowed to stop unless you, unless it's due to an emergency. What must you do if you come across roadworks that have a temporary speed limit displayed? Obey the speed limit, ignore the displayed limit, obey the limit but only during rush hour, use your own judgment, the limit is only advisory. Okay, there's no such thing as a, a, an advisory speed limit, so to speak. Um, if, it's, if it's on a digital display and it's displayed in a round circle, a round circle is an order, so you must obey the limit. Where should you stop to rest if you feel tired while you're travelling along a motorway? On the hard shoulder, no, that is for emergencies only again. Uh, it's, it's a refuge area if you have a breakdown uh, or a serious medical episode that's affecting your ability to drive. Uh, on a slip road, no, same thing again. On a slip road, they must be kept clear so you're not allowed to stop on those. At the nearest service area, on the central reservation. Okay, central reservation, definitely not. That is just a divide between uh, your direction and the oncoming traffic. And it has a crash barrier on it, so you won't be able to stop on that anyway. So at the nearest service area, where you can stop and grab a, uh, a drink or some food, or sometimes they actually have hotels, you might want to stay the night. What's the meaning of this traffic sign? Okay, it's a rectangle, so it's giving info. Um... And basically what it's showing is two directions of traffic, the largest arrow has priority in this case. So in the two-way road, no, you have priority over vehicles coming towards you, yes. You're following a lorry on a wet road, what should you do when spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? Drop back until you can see better. Keep close to the lorry, away from the spray. Put your headlights on full beam, speed up and overtake. Okay, um, speed up and overtake 
you may not have the opportunity to do that and if you can't see very well past this lorry which is what it looks like in this picture that overtaking would be extremely uh, ill-advised thing to do okay headlights and full beam okay that uh, full beam doesn't penetrate fog or spray um, it gets reflected back at you but it'll also be blinding the lorry driver every time he looks in his mirrors so that wouldn't be safe either keep close to the lorry away from the spray well if you get closer to it you're not going to be getting away from the spray you're going to put yourself in it uh, and you'll be, you'll be able to see less of the road ahead, you'll all be seeing is the back of the lorry. The back of the lorry will be filling your vision. So drop back until you can see better. When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? Okay, when stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. When parked on W lines to visit a shop. When travelling during darkness without headlights. When travelling slowly because you're lost. Okay. Um, Hazard warning lights, I mean exactly that. Your vehicle is presenting itself as a hazard to other road users. Um, so when you are stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. All the other ones here, um, putting your hazard warning lights do not mean that you can park wherever you like and flout the rules. So W the lines, we're not allowed to stop on those. There's a no waiting restriction basically. It's in force uh, at all times. So you cannot stop on W the lines. Um, traveling in darkness without headlights okay um, driving in the night without your headlights that wouldn't be very advisable because your headlights are what make you visible to everyone else so uh, if they're turned off you're not going to be visible to everyone else uh, or if you're driving like that because they're not working well that would be traffic offence your headlights must be working uh, and traveling slowly because you're lost um, okay fair enough people do slow down if they're lost because they might be looking for a particular address or road name um, but putting hazard warning lights on wouldn't really convey uh, a clear message to whoever's following so the first one when stops and temporarily obstructing traffic what does this sign mean okay it's an information sign that's blue uh, big p in it p for parking so distance to parking space ahead one mile ahead that is that one. It's an easy enough one to do. How should a load be carried on your roof rack? Securely fastened with suitable restraints, visible in your exterior mirror. Uh, that's the, you're not going to be able to see what's on your roof in your exterior mirror, okay? Loaded towards the rear of the vehicle, covered with plastic sheeting. Okay, securely fastened with suitable restraints. It must be held on your car properly. You service your own vehicle. How should you dispose of the old engine oil? Take it to a local authority site, tip it into a hole in the ground. Now, oil is toxic, so we don't want to be tipping it into the ground. It's a pollutant at the end of the day. Pour it down the drain, same thing, pollutant. Do not put that down the drain into the waterway. Uh, put it in your dustbin, no, same thing. What's in your dustbin goes to landfill, so that's just going to get buried in the ground. So take it to the local authority site, so your local refuse or recycle centre. Um, and they usually have a facility where they will recycle it because it can be reused. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing? Okay, pelican crossing, that's a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing. Um, that's has a traffic light on it with a red, amber and a green but it doesn't have a normal traffic light sequence it will be red, you stop after a few seconds red goes out, amber starts to flash um, and that flashing amber traffic light has the same meaning as the flashing amber beacon on a zebra crossing which means give way to pedestrians waiting to cross or give way to pedestrians already on the crossing well that's tricky because it could be either one um, I'd say give way to pedestrians that are already on the crossing because that's the more uh, dangerous situation for them. They're already on the road. You're parked in a busy high street. What's the safest way to turn your vehicle around so you can drive in the opposite direction? Turn around in a quiet side road. Ask someone to stop traffic. No, you can't ask people to stop traffic. A um, member of public doesn't have authority to stop traffic. Drive into a side road and reverse out into the main road. Okay, no, reversing out onto a busy major road is not safe because your visibility out the back of the car is reduced, so you can't do that safely. Um, carrying out a U-turn <coughs> in the busy high street as well, because it's busy, 
That means anything that's going to be obstructing traffic is not be advisable either. So find a quiet side road, turn around in that, and then come back out. Wherever you see these red and white markers, okay, these don't come up very often. Um, a lot of drivers probably never seen these actually in real life out on the road. They are what we call a countdown marker. So you've got three stripes represent, usually representing 300 yards to whatever the hazard is. Then you're going to see two stripes, so you're getting closer. 200 yards to the hazard, then 100 yards to the hazard. Um, red normally signifies danger. So this is a countdown to... Uh, something that's going to be highly dangerous to you. So we normally see these countdown stripes in different colours, like green background, white stripe that you you get on primary routes. Uh, blue background on a white stripe you get on motorways, that kind of thing. So this is about remembering the colour of this. So red signifying that you are uh, getting gradually getting closer and closer and closer to an extreme hazard to you. So out of these uh, motorway, well, yeah, it's not an extreme hazard. Concealed speed limit sign. Um, they never conceal speed limit signs, they're always placed uh, in a position that's very clear to see because logically we need to see it. So there's no such thing as a, a countdown to a concealed speed limit. Approaching a concealed level crossing, okay well a level crossing, a train crossing, that's a highly dangerous uh, thing for us to cross because we're obviously at risk of being hit by a train. Uh, approaching the end of a dual carriageway, okay. Um, Dual carriageway signage will either be, uh, it's either going to be a primary or non-primary route. So it's going to be white white background, black stripes, or green background, white stripes, and not this colour. So the extreme hazard out of these four will be the level crossing. So I'm going to go for that. If you're driving at night with the headlights on main beam, a vehicle is overtaking you. When should you dip your headlights? Sometime after the vehicle has passed you, no, that means when they look in the mirrors, they're going to be blinded by your main beam. Only if the other driver dips their headlights. No, it's got nothing to do with them whatsoever. We don't, we don't want to dazzle the other driver, because that could be dangerous for them. Before the vehicle starts to pass you, as soon as the vehicle passes you. That's a tricky one. Um... Because you need to be able to see where you're going. Well, as I would say as soon as the vehicle passes you. We don't want to dazzle him, but we don't want to turn him off too early. Because then we might not be able to see where we're heading ourselves. What will help you to keep your car secure? Being a member of a vehicle breakdown organisation. Passing an advanced driving test. Registering with a vehicle watch scheme. Taking car maintenance classes. Okay, keeping it secure. This is about keeping the vehicle safe. Um, so it doesn't get vandalised or broken into. So maybe registering with a vehicle watch scheme because the breakdown is not going to help with that. Um, neither will you being an advanced driver. This is about where I park my, park my vehicle in a safe location. I'm going to go with that vehicle watch scheme. Why do motorcyclists often look around over their right shoulder just before turning right? Okay, the, um, they're doing this because... Uh, all of our mirrors have blind spots, uh, which means there could be something passing you on the right hand side that you will not be visible in your right mirror. So to listen for traffic behind them, it helps them balance as they turn. No, definitely not that. Most of the cycles don't have mirrors. No, yes they do. To check for traffic in their blind area. There we go. It's a blind spot check, or a life check, it can be called. There's been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying Injured and unconscious, why should you only remove their helmet if it's essential? Okay, they're unconscious, so they're not able to tell you what kind of injuries they have, what kind of pain they might have. Um, and there is a risk that they've got a spinal injury, so moving them could, could actually cause them more damage. Uh, so, removing it could make any injuries worse. There we go. You're driving on the road as a cycle lane. What does it mean if the lane is marked by a broken white line? Okay, any broken white line means uh, this, is a, this is a line that we are allowed to cross should we need to. Um, a solid white line would mean we shouldn't cross it at all. So you shouldn't drive in a lane unless it's unavoidable. There we go, it could be that. Okay, cyclists can travel in both directions. No, if you look at the markings in the picture, they're all facing one direction. So they're not allowed to, it's not a contraflow lane, they're not coming at us. 
There's a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane. Uh, no. <laughs> the lane must be used by motorcyclists. No, it is for cycles only. As the picture denotes it's got a bicycle on the ground, it is cyclists only. So you shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. So you can cross into the bike lane to get around the obstruction provided it's safe. What should you do when you're driving in scenario conditions? Definitely not brake firmly and quickly because your wheels will lock up and you're going to a skid. Use side lights only. Um, no, you want to be more visible than that. Dips, headlights and tail lights. Be ready to steer sharply. Now again, that could cause your wheels to skid. So brake gently in plenty of time so your wheels have less risk of losing grip. What should you be prepared to do in this situation? Okay, we've got a picture of a lorry. Uh, it's coming out of a side road. Because it's a long vehicle, the... the the rear wheels in all vehicles cut corners, and on a long vehicle, that corner cutting uh, is exaggerated, it'll cut corner more. So this vehicle is going to have to come out quite wide in order for the back wheels to not mount the pavement. And this, you can see it's doing it in this picture, it's actually coming out, exiting this side road, uh, it's beginning to encroach upon the lane that you would be approaching it in. Um, and you need to give it room. Sound in your horn and continue, well yeah, you can make him aware you're there, but if you continue you're going to collide with it. So definitely not that. Report the driver to the police. No, he's not doing anything wrong, he's exiting the side road in the safest manner he can for the size of his vehicle. Slow down and give way, or squeeze through the gap. Okay, well I wouldn't want to risk squeezing through that gap, and the further out he comes that gap is going to reduce. So that would be highly unsafe. So slow down and give him room to complete the manoeuvre. Slow down and give way. Why should you keep well to the left as you approach a right hand bend? Okay, um, looking at this little diagram here, if you imagine there's a vehicle coming the other way, uh, you're not going to be able to see that, and he's not going to be able to see you, and we don't know what kind of vehicle it is, it could be a big vehicle. Um, so if you keep to the far left, your line of sight is going to get longer, so to improve your view of the road, to let faster traffic from behind overtake, to overcome the effect of the road slope, it may not have one, and there's nothing there suggesting it has, to be positioned safely if you skid. Okay. Definitely wouldn't overtake on the bend, that's highly dangerous, so you can rule that one out. Um, there's nothing to suggest that you're going to skid either, there's no, you know, this sign's got nothing to do with that. And again, to overcome the road slope, well, you know. Again, this sign doesn't tell you there's a slope in the road, isn't whether there's any camber or what kind of camber it is. To improve your view of the road ahead is what it will do. How will you benefit from following the manufacturer's service schedule of your vehicle? Your vehicle will be cheaper to insure. Your vehicle will remain reliable. Your vehicle tax will be lower. Your journey times will be reduced. Right. The service schedule basically means your vehicle is going to be... Uh, kept in good work and order. So your vehicle will be cheaper to ensure your vehicle will remain reliable. Thank you. My well, vehicle mirror is often slightly curved. Okay, they give a wider field of vision. They make it easy to judge the speed of traffic behind. They totally cover blind spots. They make the traffic behind look bigger. Okay. Your mirrors are curved so that you get a wider field of vision. So it's going to be this first answer here. Um, the drawback of that is they actually they do not make traffic behind look bigger. They actually make traffic behind look smaller and further away. So it's the opposite of this. Um, your mirrors also do not cover all the blind spots. So you can rule that one out as well. Um, and the, what you see in the mirror, uh, it's not going to make it easier to judge the speed of the traffic behind either. A curved mirror basically gives you a wider field of vision. You're on a long motorway journey, what should you do if you start to feel sleepy? Okay, remember this from earlier? Um, there was a question earlier on about where you can stop. Right, we are not allowed to stop anywhere on the motorway um, apart from at a service station, somewhere where you can park up and rest um, or exit the motorway. Um, and find a safe place to park. So, uh, you're on a long motorway journey, what should you do if you start to feel sleepy? Play some loud music, that might work. Drive faster, complete the journey. No, you definitely don't want to be driving faster when you feel drowsy. That could be highly dangerous. 
But we're not allowed to stop on a hard shoulder for a rest. It's not a safe place to stop for a rest. Leave the motorway and stop in a safe place. There we go. We'll do that. Who has priority at unmarked crossroads? Okay, crossroad uh, is a junction with uh, at least four roads coming into it, uh, where four roads meet. And if it's unmarked, it means none of you have got priority. So normally we would see give way lines or traffic lights, which will give priority to certain directions. Um, but if it's unmarked, it means that none of you have priority. So no one has priority. What's the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway? Okay, dual carriageway, uh, dual means two, carriageway, old fashioned name for road. So two roads. Now that means you, you've got a road that's broken into two by a central reservation. So you're separated from your oncoming traffic physically, rather than it being just a, a painted line separating you, it's actually a physical island or crash barrier. Uh, so because you're separated from your oncoming traffic, it's deemed safer to do 70 miles an hour. Following a collision, the person has been injured. What should be a warning sign for shock? Flushed complexion, slow pulse, warm dry skin, or rapid shallow breathing? I'm going to go with the rapid. Yeah, this is this is where I'm a little bit weak because these are questions that I've not done before. Um, but I'm going to go with the rapid shallow breathing for shock. Okay, what should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 mile an hour limit? Okay, uh, the legal requirement in the UK is if you park on a road at night with anything, on a, on a road that has a speed limit above 30 mile an hour, so the 40, 50, 60, 70 limits, you must leave your parking lights on. Um, park facing the traffic, not such a good idea because there's there are no reflectors on the front of the vehicle. Leave dipped headlights on. Um, you don't need to be able to do that if you leave the key in the car because they won't work without the key. So that would mean your car is unsecure. Someone could get in it and drive it off. So definitely not that. Leave parking lights on. Okay, parking lights are exactly what they suggest. You park your car. You can leave these lights on. They make your uh, car visible to everyone else. They work without the key. So you can leave them on, take the key with you, lock the vehicle, etc. Uh, park near a street light. Okay, there may not be a street light. Not every road is lit. So definitely leave the parking lights on. Which road users benefit from two can crossings? Okay, there's a clue in the name of this. Two can, meaning two can use it. So car drivers and motorcyclists, no. Bus and lorry drivers, no. Cyclists and pedestrians, tram and train drivers. Okay, um, I said this at the beginning, Toucan is a type of pedestrian crossing, so you were looking for one that has pedestrian in the answer. So, And because Toucan, two types of people can use it, that will be cyclists and pedestrians. What should you do if you're driving on the motorway and you miss the exit you wanted to take? Um, Carefully reverse along a hard shoulder. No, you, you're reversing towards traffic doing it. Well, if it's a band limit, it's 70 miles an hour, so that's not safe. Carefully reverse in the left-hand lane, definitely not that, because it's the same thing, you're reversing into the oncoming traffic. Carry on to the next exit, or make a U-turn at the next gap in the central reservation. Okay, um, there are no gaps in the central reservation, so that's not possible. Carry on to the next exit. You take the next exit, you'll be able to turn around at that exit and come up the motorway in the opposite direction. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all the engines are stopped. What else should you do? So you're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all the engines are stopped. Right, so that's good. Um, but there are injured persons, right? Make sure that an ambulance has been called. Well, we're only doing one answer here as well. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. No, definitely not, because we don't know what their injuries are. That could be very bad. Uh, stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. No, I don't agree with that. You have no, no authority to stop people. It may not be safe to stop other cars either, depending on their speed. Okay, move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. Okay, you should never move an injured person unless there is another immediate danger to them, i.e. Uh, where they have stopped, they're at risk of being hit again by another vehicle. So, 
make sure that an ambulance has been called to be the first thing you do so you know that there's some professional help on the way. Ooh, that went a bit weird, okay. What, what makes the vehicle in the picture environmentally friendly? Okay, it's a picture of a tram uh, and they are environmentally friendly because they run on electricity uh, so they, they don't pollute the area that they're, that they're operating within so it is powered by electricity. How should you use the lanes on the motorway? Use the lane that has the least traffic, overtake using the lane that's clearest, keep to the left lane unless you're overtaking, stay in one lane until you reach your exit. Okay, um, a motorway can have two, three, four, five lanes, however many it's got. Um, the lane discipline is the same on every single road that we have. We drive on the left in the UK, so the left lane is the normal driving lane, and you should always keep the normal driving lane, so the leftmost lane that goes to your destination, and only use any lanes to your right um, to overtake or do right turn if it's not motorway. But um, so on the motorway, keep to the left hand lane unless you're overtaking. What colour are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left hand lane on the motorway? Okay, um, the left hand side, these work like a traffic light essentially, um, red signifying danger. So on your left, when you're driving on a road, uh, on your left hand side, or what we call the near side, um, that's the edge of the road. And if you go off the edge of the road, that means you're leaving the road um, and you're, you know, you're going into a field or crashing into a tree, you're basically leaving the road. And you don't want to leave the road, so they're going to mark the left hand lane of a motorway. Um, with a red stud. Red signifying do not go that way. The other colours, just so you know, um, white studs between the lane markings, just like the white lines on the ground. Um, amber stud will be up against uh, between the right hand lane and the central reservation. And on the left hand side where you normally get the red studs, uh, if there's an entrance or an exit, the red studs will basically become green ones to signify that traffic can either enter or exit at that point. Okay, this question. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral, known as coasting? Okay, uh, in neutral that means your engine is disengaged and the engine powers everything. So the engine powers the wheels, um, the power assisted steering, and the braking system. Um, it's highly dangerous to put it in neutral because that means your engine is disconnected, so there's no power to your brakes. Um, so, improvement in control, no, <laughs> definitely not. Reduction in control, uh, yeah. Easier steering, no. Increased fuel consumption, no. Right, reduction in control because you have you've lost braking ability once you have that. Your brakes will work um, less effectively. It's going to take longer for your car to stop. Why should these road markings be kept clear? Uh, okay, the, these are usually the uh, zigzag lines, similar to the white zigzags you get at pedestrian crossings. In this case, outside schools, there'll be yellow zigzags. And they're den denoting an area that must be kept clear. They're usually by the school gates. And this is so that approaching traffic has a clear view of where all the children are uh, when they're either entering the school or exiting it. So, to allow children to see and be seen when they're crossing the road. That one. If you're travelling along this road, how should you pass the cyclist? Um, sound your horn as you pass. No, that will probably scare the life out of them, or make them swerve or weave. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Keep close to them as you pass them. I don't want to be close to them, in, again, in case they do need, if they swerve. To avoid a drain cover or pothole, etc. So I want to give them plenty of room. <coughs> change down one gear before you pass. Um, yeah, we normally we change down to overtake, uh, but that's not going to be necessary. Well, well, probably not necessary to overtake cyclists. We don't need a huge amount of speed to get past them um, because they're usually travelling quite slow. Okay, leave them plenty of room as you pass, uh, and the amount of space we give them. Uh, and all you teach pupils to imagine how much space the cyclist will occupy on the road if they fall off their bike and try to pass them that much. So you give them as much room as you safely can, usually at least one and a half to two metres. 
And I, well, while I'm doing this test, I am doing it in the living room, but my, my children, because I'm going to lock down all the wife and children in the house, so you might hear my children in the background now and then, so apologies for that. Okay, what's the purpose of triangle shaped signs? Okay, uh, triangles are to give advanced warnings. The other ones to give orders, right? That would be a round sign. To give information would be a rectangle sign. Uh, to give directions, actually, ironically enough, direction signs are also, they're also information boards, so they're rectangles as well. So, out of all the signage, triangle are warnings, round give orders, rectangle give information. What will happen if you use rear fog lights in good conditions? They'll dazzle other drivers for definite because we had this worded, we had this same question worded a bit differently earlier. Um, <coughs> they're very bright lights designed to penetrate fog, so if it's clear, that's a very bright, powerful light dazzling the driver behind you. What does this sign mean? Okay, it's a round sign, so it's an order. Um, and most of the round signs we see are white background. Uh, with a red red ring around the outside, which means it's a negative order. So, like a speed limit sign, it could be white with a red ring and have a 30 in it, meaning you must not do more than 30 miles per hour. Um, in this case, because it's blue, it's, it's round being an order, it's blue, which means it's a positive order. This is something you must do. So this is saying you must do a minimum of 30 miles per hour. You're reversing into a side road, when would your vehicle be the greatest hazard to passing traffic? Ah, okay. Um, when we steer, when we're reversing, uh, your front is going to swing out, so it's going to be part way through the manoeuvre. So after you've completed the manoeuvre, now when you've completed it, you're going to be in a safe position when you've stopped. After you've entered the side road, um, again, after you've entered it, um, your vehicle you would have lined up the kerb so it's going to be straight just before you begin to manoeuvre or when the front of your vehicle swings out yeah so other people might try to pass you and then you steer and start to turn the corner your front swings out and it could collide with them okay this sign is another round sign so it's an order sign uh, and this is what I was talking about just now it's white with a red ring so this is a negative order so this is uh, picturing a car on a motor and a motor car. Uh, sorry, motor car on a motorcycle. Um, so it's a negative order aimed at motor vehicles. So no motor vehicles allowed past that sign. Go on quickly before they step. Oh, sorry. I'll just read the question with that, wouldn't it? What should you do if you see a pedestrian waiting at a zebra crossing? Go on quickly before they step onto the crossing. Now that could be dangerous to do that. You speed up to get through it and then they step out. You're going to be hitting them. Be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. Possible. Stop before you reach the zigzag lines. Now, right, the zigzag lines, that's not where we stop. Um, a pedestrian, in this case it says zebra crossing. Uh, the black and white stripes across the floor, they have a white dotted line just in front of them, which is a giveaway line. So we should be going up to the giveaway line. So it's not this answer either. Ignore them as they're still on the pavement. Okay, now that would be unsafe again because they might step out just as you're about to pass. So be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 mile an hour limit generally indicated? By hazard warning lines, by pedestrian islands, by street lighting, by double or single yellow lines. Okay, double or single yellow lines control parking or waiting restrictions. Uh, we don't always have those, they're not on every single road, so not that. Pedestrian islands, um, also not every single road has pedestrian islands, it's only the wide roads that normally have those. Um, hazard warning lines, no, not that. <laughs> Street lighting, okay, 30 mile an hour is usually um, in built up areas and built up areas that are populated are normally lit with street lighting, so the street lighting is the answer for that. Okay, you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights, what should you do? Okay, we want to let this ambulance pass us, but we want to do it in a safe manner and we want to pull over um, somewhere where the ambulance actually still has enough space uh, to pass you. 
So pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Maintain your speed and course. Okay, if you maintain speed and course, it means the ambulance can't pass you. So that, that's not going to be any good. You're going to be obstructing it. Accelerate hard to get away from it. No. Um, accelerating hard to get away from it means that you, you're now driving higher risk. Um, and you could have an accident that's not going to, that's going to hinder the ambulance. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. Okay, you brake harsh, the ambulance could go in the back of you. Um, and if you're sticking out to the road, you're obstructing it. It may not be able to get past you either, so definitely with that. So pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to brake hard. What should you do? Ignore the air and stay calm. Sound your horn to show your annoyance. No, okay, the car horn is used to warn others of your presence. Um, we never use it in anger. Right? It's a traffic offence to use it in anger, so we're not allowed to do that. Flash your lights to show your annoyance, and the same thing. Um, flashing headlight to warn other drivers of your presence, not to be used in anger. So you rule that one out as well. Overtake as soon as possible. No, no, I wouldn't rush in that situation, I'd want to assess it. Um, they've made a mistake. So ignore the error and stay calm. Everyone on the road has a duty of care to one another, um, and everyone on the road at some point will make a driver error, and it's up to everyone else around them to work with that person to ensure nothing bad comes out of it. You know, just accept we all make mistakes, so ignore the error and stay calm. You see a pedestrian waiting at a zebra crossing, what should you normally do? Um, okay, because they're about possibly about to step out, the last thing we want to do is go past quickly. In case they do step out, you end up hitting them. Uh, stop to let them cross and wait patiently. Stop before you reach the zigzag lines. Okay, again from before, the zigzag lines denote an area to be kept clear. They're not where we stop. Um, there will be a, this says zebra crossing, so there's going to be a dotted white line in just in front of the black and white zigzag stripes across the floor that's where we stop so you can ignore this question and this, this answer as well ignore them as they're still on the pavement no again we can't ignore them because they might be about to step out so stop to let them cross and wait for them to finish before you drive on what's the nearest you may park to a junction okay this is one you're going to have to know this has been the highway code um, we're not allowed to park less than 10 meters from a junction, so two and a half car lengths, roughly. So 10 metres is the distance from a junction, that's the closest you're allowed to park to it. Which of these signs warns you of a zebra crossing? Okay, I'll go through these. Uh, I'm going to point at this one here. This shows two elderly people. This is warning you of uh, a higher concentration of elderly people within the area, uh, usually because there's one, you know, at least one or more care homes there. And elderly people are, are a potential hazard to us because they cross the road more slowly. Uh, they might have poor judgment when to cross the road, that kind of thing. So this doesn't warn us of a pedestrian crossing. It's just warning us of elderly people. This one's warning us of children, um, a higher concentration of children within the area um, due to playgrounds or schools, that kind of thing. This one here, this is... Warning us, or it's showing an adult and a, an adult and a child. So that's warning us of pedestrians in the road. We're going to find this sign uh, on it on roads that have no pavements. And this one here, right, this shows a pedestrian that is uh, clearly crossing from one side to another, from left to right, uh, and he's crossing within a marked out area, marked out with these dotted lines. So th this is representing the pedestrian crossing. So that warns you of a zebra crossing ahead. Um, and that's the last question, so I am going to view summary. And it says I've answered all 50 questions, none of them are incomplete. Um, I'm going to end the current test, then we're going to see how many I've got right. Oh, good, I've got 50 out of 50. So there was that one question, uh, the medical question, that I wasn't quite sure of, but I did get the right answer. So that's good. Okay, that is the end of that test. Hopefully you found that uh, insightful and in how this test operates and it's given you also quite a few answers which I've explained.